Hello, my friends, and welcome to another episode of the Million Pound Mission Podcast. It's your buddy, Adam, the PhD, the previously heavy dude, and this is episode number 338, Becoming a Bomb Mom, with my friend, Melissa Vogel. Very excited for this one. Melissa is one of my brand new fitness buddies, one of my favorite new people I've met recently, and we uh, put together quite a, a nice episode for you here. And before we dive into that, I just want to catch up a little bit. Uh, I want to talk about the community, what we've got going on. Also, I am meeting a demand that you guys have been making. Uh, let's let's start there. I've been getting a lot of inquiries about one-on-one stuff, one-on-one coaching, consultations, things like that. Uh, I've done these on and off in the past, and right now it just seems like these are in high demand. So I'm making some more time on my calendar to make these happen. Uh, just a real quick description on what I can offer you there. With the one-on-one coaching, I've got a 28-day format. We do the battle plan workbook. We map out the next 28 days, and we are in contact every day. We do a once-per-week video chat. Uh, we line up your macros, your nutrition, your fitness. Like Make sure you have all the resources you need, uh, depending on what you have available to you. And we uh, are, are there to, you know, I'm there to hold you accountable. You, they're working with me on a daily basis. Uh, that's 28 days. It's $297. All the info there is on millionpoundmission.com. I can't take a ton of those. Uh, like I said, I've cleared off more spots for that uh, on my calendar, um, but I can only take a few per month. So there is an application for that. Right now, I'm able to get people in within three weeks of applying. That may uh, get shorter, it may get longer, who knows, depending on how you guys respond to this offer. So uh, that's available at millionpoundmission.com. There's a, a one-on-one coaching session. You'll see it there on the homepage. Also, uh, something that is newer. I used to do these. I brought them back with a new name, which is a much better name. So uh, a lot of people just want a consultation. They, they want to just kind of get their, the ship righted and they want to get going in the right direction again and just get some guidance. So uh, I normally haven't done these, but again, it's something that people are asking for. So I am calling these a, it's a consultation, but I'm really, I'm, I'm calling it and labeling it a get your shit together session. So if you need to get your shit together and you just need a one-on-one chat with me, we'll go for 45 minutes and we will fill out a battle plan workbook together. We'll map out your next 28 days. We'll put up some strategies for your upcoming transformation danger zones. We'll dial in your nutrition. We'll dial in your fitness schedule. And uh, we'll send you off to the races with your shit fully together. Uh, so that is uh, there on the website as well. Uh, that's 90, 97 bucks for a 45-minute session. I've added uh, plenty of those to my calendar. I should be able to take care of people if you take action on that. Uh, it's all at millionpoundmission.com. So check those options out. Also inside of our free community, which you can plug into again through the website, millionpoundmission.com. Uh, we've, this is week two in our 28 day cycle that I've got the entire community on that includes you guys. Uh, we have group chats this week on Tuesday. So make sure you plug in on uh, Tuesday, the 12th. We've got group chats the next few weeks. Uh, we try to do them every week that we don't have hot seat sessions going on. So those are available. They're great. You can plug in do video chats. We can talk about whatever you need to talk about. We usually have, you know, 10 to 20 people on there and you get to meet some very interesting people and make some accountability, accountability buddies. Dang it. I messed that up. Didn't I accountability buddies? Uh, those are always good to have. Right. And I try to facilitate those connections as much as possible. Also, next week is week three, which in our 28-day cycle is challenge week. Uh, this is one of my favorite challenges to do. Uh, it is a 20 ounces of water in 20 minutes challenge. This is, it seems like a dumb challenge, but is one of the most impactful challenges I ever do with my community. I hit up a lot, a lot of my, lot of my uh, podcasting buddies that aren't in the health space hit me up for health advice uh, and the, like so example my buddy Justin uh Justin Shank from the Growth Now Movement podcast he was a, having a he he's in charge of the Growth Now movement but he was having a very hard time having bowel movements uh and I said dude you're probably chronically dehydrated I guarantee it that it'll help you a ton didn't believe me uh but we were at an event I said just drink 20 ounces of water within the first 20 minutes every single day and watch what happens And he literally said this was the best health advice he's ever gotten from anyone ever because it fixed, it fixed him. So uh, congrats to Justin. But this is great for your energy. It's great for your recovery. It's great for bowel movements and digestion. Uh, 20 ounces of water, the first 20 minutes of every day, you just chug it down and get your day started. Uh, One of my friends on the the podcast is called Flushing Your Inner Toilet. 
and it works. So we'll be doing that challenge next week inside of the free community, the Mission Possible community, and you can check that out at millionpoundmission.com. Now, let's dive into this week's interview with Melissa Vogel. Now, I know you guys know plenty of moms out there that have totally sacrificed their own health so that they can pull all of their resources and energy and effort into their family and into their career. And I honestly feel like this describes like 90% of the moms out there, but the good news is that it doesn't have to be that way. Yes, it's true. It's true. Uh, so this week I'm bringing in my good friend, Melissa Vogel to help us show all the moms out there that they can have their family, they can have their career and they can have their health all in alignment and going strong. Now, Melissa is a busy mother of three. Uh, she's a lifestyle and fitness coach. She's an actor. Uh, she's the host of the new Bomb Mom podcast. A lot of things going on. She's super busy. She's a busy mom entrepreneur, a mompreneur, mompreneur. There we go. That sounds better. Uh, no, it doesn't. And uh, she's getting it all done. And now she's showing all her Bomb Mom clients out there how to do it as well. And she's helping them reclaim control over their own health and fitness. And in this episode, uh, we dive into all things being a bomb mom. We talk about the health lessons that Melissa learned from her own three pregnancies. We talk about the mistakes she sees women making when they are trying to get back in shape post-pregnancy. We talk about how she is trying to positively influence her own daughters with their nutrition and their fitness. And then she gives us plenty of tips for busy moms that tend to put themselves and their health on the back burner. This is an awesome one. If you enjoy my vibe, enjoy my style, you will love Melissa's stuff. Plug in. Her Instagram is amazing. I'll put all the links in the show notes. So without any further delay, let's dive into episode number 338, Becoming a Bomb Mom with Melissa Vogel. All right, Melissa, welcome to the Million Pound Mission podcast. How are we doing today, my friend? Hello, I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. I'm really excited because you uh, were brought to my attention from a friend of both of ours, Joe Sanok. And uh, Joe's somebody that I know takes his podcasting very seriously. He's like, you guys will produce podcasting magic. So I was like, all right, uh, I, I trust you. Uh, I've <laughs> thoroughly true. enjoyed I've thoroughly enjoyed watching your Instagram, your Instagram stories, uh, all the fun that you're having. Uh, as we record this, we're both under quarantine. Um, so we're both kind of going nuts about that, uh, as is, you know, most people in the world. But um, Absolutely. I'm, really, I'm really excited in, to introduce you to our audience here. I think they're just going to really enjoy your information. So uh, why don't you kind of tell us a little bit about the story, about how you fell in love with fitness as you grew up kind of in the gym. So I think it's a pretty cool story. So why don't we start yeah. there? Yeah, for sure. Um, so as a little girl, I didn't grow up in like tutus and sparkles and bows and pigtails. Maybe I threw in some pigtails. I don't know. Um, but I grew up in like the gym, like you said, like I grew up doing Seishin Kai and karate and Wing Chun and like I wore gi 90% of my life. That's awesome. <laughs> And what's funny is because like now still do martial arts and we have a uniform and I'm the student right now that's like, can I not wear my uniform? Like I always try to avoid not putting that uniform on because I'm like, I wore it all the time growing up. Um, but yeah, my, my dad was into physical fitness. He was a cop. He was also part of the SWAT. My entire family is like military. And it's just something that I kind of grew up with. Um, but I think it's very interesting that like I'm, I have four other siblings and I'm really the only one that took, a, took the path of health and wellness, even though we grew up in the same environment. Wow. Like boggles my mind, right? Like same yeah. environment, totally different product. <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah, when I was in high school, the thing that really launched me and like kind of built my foundation and my platform for this is I was walking the halls and they'd always had these bulletin boards of like, you know, help wanted or jobs and stuff. And I saw one uh, that they wanted someone to clean the equipment in exchange for a free membership. I was like, um, dream job. Yes. Hashtag yes, job. please. I'm like, no one's taken this yet. <laughs> I'm like, how is this still available? Yeah, no one else was like chopping at the bit for that. So I went in. I was like, I think I was 15. I, I I couldn't even drive yet, so I think my mom had to take me. And they're like, yeah, all you gotta do is spray the stuff down, dust, you know, clean, then you can do whatever you want. I'm like, score. Yes. So I started doing that, and then they're like, have you ever done classes before? I'm like, no. So I started taking classes, and they're like you're actually really good at this. You should start, you know, looking more into it and teaching. And little by little, I actually started teaching classes at 16. 
That's awesome. And they're like, don't tell anyone your age. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay, why? And they're like, oh, you know, you're kind of young, you know, and all the other instructors like 20s, 30s, right, right. 40s. So I started teaching really, really young. Like the instructors kind of took me under their wing and they'd like give me 10 minutes of their class and then 15 minutes of their class. And then I would build my own programs. And meanwhile, I'm a high school, you know, student. Um, I played varsity volleyball all four years. I played with my sister who was a senior and I was a freshman and they'd be like, do you think you can train on the team? Like extra practices? Nice. Like, oh, oh, okay. So we would have practice or like on off days, the whole team would come to my gym and I'd run classes and we would do like step aerobics and, (laughs) you know, like weights and yeah, it was crazy. So that's how I just got my foot in the door. And that led to like personal training. And they're like, Hey, we'll, we'll pay for your certifications. If you just keep teaching and training here. And I'm like, okay. So I literally did that all through high school all through college. Um, that's the only way I survived because my parents were like, you have to go to school, but we're not going to help you. <laughs> right. Yeah. So I taught at like, uh, at one point I think I was at seven gyms. Wow. And it was kind of like, you don't teach, you don't eat. So right. I had to really budget my money and figure out, okay, if I teach this many classes, I can get groceries and gas this week. So yeah, it you, you kind of grew up as like a, a, a child fitness prodigy then like you were like <laughs> right? the, the young, the young savant in, in the gym and I guess. tell anyone how old you are. Like that's one phrase you usually don't shouldn't respond well to at a gym. Like don't tell anyone how old you are. <laughs> like, right. <laughs> usually that means some bad, like some weird things are happening. Uh, yes. So, uh, but in this case, uh, it was more of you just being a uh, prodigy and that's so cool to, to grow up and and be in that environment with you know, the influence of your father and having like i always could tell the difference when i work with an adult that had done either usually like martial arts gymnastics or swimming as a kid because that like discipline so is, is just ingrained in those sports it seems like and so uh, true it, it feels like that just kind of brings them to a different place as an adult with their their health and fitness so now you're super well known for helping busy moms. Like you're a busy mom. You help other busy moms reclaim control over their, their health and fitness. You're a mom of three, correct? You have three, yes. three, three girls, three girls. Oh man. Uh, Just so, like me. So, <laughs> Scary. so let's talk a little bit about your journey through those pregnancies, like lessons learned. And let's kind of extrapolate that for moms that are, uh, I like to use the phrase that are out there trying to kind of reclaim their pre-baby body, you know, yeah. or, if that's even a, a, a possibility because I know you, you know, it is. You, yeah. Yeah. So th- let, let's, let's start with, with that now as the next phase of our conversation begins with like, <laughs> the birthing of, of the, uh, the mini Melissa's. Right. <laughs> well, you know, and it's funny because everyone thinks too, when they hear my story and they're like, Oh, well, that's why she's so fit right now because she grew up doing grew this up in the and, gym. Like, she, right. Right. Grew up in the gym. She knows what she's doing. Of course she's fit with three moms and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, Mm, there's a little, there's, I'm like an Oreo cookie. There's definitely cream in the middle of my story. <laughs> definitely some cream uh, loaded with fat, <laughs> but it was weird because, you know, I became a mom pretty young and it was like, Oh, I can just keep doing what I was doing and I'll stay fit. And that's not true. Like every year you get older, you're fighting collagen, elastin, muscle, like everything, you know, and it, it's, it's a losing battle, but you don't have to lose the battle. Um, and with each pregnancy, it just got harder and harder on me. And by the time I hit my last baby, I had gained over 60 pounds. Um, my second child, I was my first kid. I I lost the weight pretty quick. Um, I do a lot of acting and modeling too. And one thing that I could definitely remember is eight weeks after my first baby was born, I got booked for a lingerie shoot. Um, that's motivation. So I literally had this tiny little baby off in the corner because I was like, I'm nursing, so I have to bring my baby. Is that okay <laughs> while I wear your lingerie? <laughs> I'll try not to get breast milk on it. Like, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> like, it's probably going to happen. That's like, awesome. It's fine. It's fine, honey. So, but that was a, like a marker in my head. Like, okay, eight weeks. I wasn't totally there, but I was good enough to put something on and someone wanted to take pictures, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, But my second one was hard. I almost actually lost her at five months and I couldn't do anything. Food was the only thing that made me feel better. And then after she was born, we almost lost her again. 
and she's like my miracle baby. And so we spent all this time in the hospital. Um, it, it was just nuts. And so I didn't lose the weight that quick after that one. And then I'm like, let's do this again. This was so fun. Let's have another baby. <laughs> and <laughs> we had this other one. And now you're taking two, take care of two other kids and you're pregnant. And I felt like crap. And I knew all the things that I should do and I couldn't do. And that baby only weighed seven pounds, six ounces and mama weighed over more than dad, you know? So yeah. <laughs> it was like, oh my God. And it was just the things I did before and all this time I had, and I could go to the gym and college and, you know, even with just one baby, like I was a different beast now, you know, yeah. you become a mom and your body changes, your world changes, your time, your priorities, everything changes. And I was like, I can't do what I used to do. I, I need to pivot. Like this isn't happening. And I would try and do the DVDs in the basement because I'm from Michigan. So um, I would do, we had a basement and I would try and do like the beach body, like insanity and stuff, you know, and they were having us do the mountain climbers, you know, mountain yeah. climbers, you're on all fours and you're running. And I had this breaking moment. And this is literally when busy to bomb fit mom like was born. This is when I had my fourth baby and I was on my hands and knees doing mountain climbers, running my knees in and my stomach was hitting my thighs. Oh man. And I was like, Oh my God, who am I? How, how did I get here? Like my stomach should not be that big that it hits my thighs. And it was, and I literally like just dropped my knees. I started bawling. I was just like, who am I? How did this happen? Who, who did I become? Like, I'm a nutritional coach. I'm a trainer. Like I know better than this. And it still happened to me. So over the last five years has been my true journey of transformation of like being a mom of three, how do you become fit and ripped? you know, when you're fighting age and everything else and time and sports and school now. And, um, that's how I just, everything I did, I logged, I logged, I tracked, I, I saw what worked, what didn't work. And, and that's how I became who I am today. And there's a lot of failure in there, you know? Well, I love a lot about what you're saying. And I feel like one of the real key bullet points that we have, you know, our, our listener base here is like 80% female, most of which are moms. So mm -hmm. I know a lot of them are nodding their head like, this sounds yeah. very familiar. Um, one of the things that you said was that your body after pregnancy and just who you are and the way you had to approach things, it had to change. You had to, to pivot the, the way that you approached fitness. Mm -hmm. And a lot of moms really get hung up on getting back to where they were. And I feel like it's totally possible to achieve similar levels of fitness, but it's like you said, it's just going to be a different journey. Sure. Uh, and it's hard for me sometimes as a man to get that across to a woman that's had <laughs> kids. And I'm like, no, no, th th your body is different. Your journey will be different. You can achieve what you've achieved in the past, but we have to kind of, we kind of have to let go of that, that old self a little bit, like used to motivate it, but it, we, we're just going to have a totally different like litmus test as far as yeah. results go. Am I, am I off base there? Or do you feel like that's kind of right? Not at all. You're totally correct because you, you'll never be her again. You'll never be 20 year old Melissa again. And what's funny too, is I know women, a lot of women will understand this, no matter how small I got, you know, like how much, what that number said on the scale, there are certain jeans and pants that will never fit me. So I used to wear them when I was 22. And although I weigh less than when I was at there, your hips and your body structure and everything changes so much those pants will never button like ever again. I got to let that go. And that was hard for me because I was like, no, yeah. these are my skinny pants. No, they're my skinny pants. Why aren't they fitting? But that was the whole, it's a mindset too of like, you will never be that person, but it's okay. You're going to become an even better person. Yeah. And I'm more fit and ripped than I ever was in college which is crazy because I played college ball. I was teaching insane, you know, amount of classes. I was pretty fit. And to be now post three kids, um, to be like, no, I got way better abs than I did then. Like that makes me feel good. Like, yeah. yes, I'm not her. I'm someone different. And I love that. Yeah. It's, it's new and improved. So let's dive into the process a little bit. Cause I'm sure those questions are popping up for our listeners. Like, okay. How did you personally pivot? What were some of the first steps to reclaiming control over your fitness? And then how did you implement on that to achieve what you've achieved today? Yeah. Um, so one of the things that I had to really let go of was cardio. I was like a cardio bunny. And 
teaching classes, I'm like, no, we got to get our heart rate up and we have to do this like seven times a week, you know, maybe eight, I don't know. Sometimes we double up and (laughs) that's just how we lose weight, you know, and I had to let that go. And I had to really focus on no weights, strength training. That is now your BFF and finding a new way to make my body in pain and let go of like the endless hours on the treadmill and sweating or the spin class or whatever, like they're fun and great supplement, but that was a huge mindset shift. And, you know, as a female too, that's hard to do because you're going into a male dominant environment. Yeah, There's chicks in there, you know, but you really are going into a male world um, so that helped, that makes you fight it even more of like, are you sure? Cause there's all the chicks in the, in the spin class right now. Are you sure I should be going to the weight room? <laughs> so it's, you're always second guessing yourself, but yeah. that was the biggest thing that I had to change and shift was an implement was weights. They're your best friend. Now you need to learn how to do it better. You need to do it more often. You need to separate your muscle groups more, um, full body's great, but like, Hey, if you can really destroy your chest on one day, make it sore. Great. And then move on to your legs, then move on to this, you know? So that with, with, I think that was the, the good time to, to bring up the question that it's less prevalent compared to what it used to be, but the whole, like, I'm going to look like a man, I'm going to bulk up like that whole thing. <laughs> like it's still out there, right? That, that, that still yes. is out there. I've got to do treadmill only because I don't want to look like a man. I don't want to look like you, Adam. I'll look, if you, if I do deadlifts and squats, I will look like Adam. Uh, <laughs> So just kind of unwind that, that myth a little bit for me and talk, maybe talk about a little bit about what you actually are doing and people can go look at you like, you don't look like me at all. Like it's, we don't look like twins or anything. You're not, you're <laughs> not, not you know, we're not, not twins. You're not two, two thirty six three Vin Diesel, you know, yeah. it, it's, <laughs> you know, it, you look very feminine and yeah. You know, so just talk <laughs> about your own routine and let's dispel that myth a little bit. Yeah, for sure. So it started out when I was like, okay, this, I'm going to spend more time in the weight room. Like this needs to happen because I would notice my body was responding more like, huh, well, normally would have taken me, you know, three weeks to lose five pounds with adding another class in or doing another Zumba class or whatever. I just achieved that in two weeks with just lifting. Hmm, okay. There's something to this. Cause I did a lot of logging and tracking, like logging and tracking and pictures. Um, I used to do like two muscle groups at a time. And that worked for years. I loved it. You know, I would do like chest and by together, back and try together. Then I would do legs and then like shoulder and core. So I would have like four good solid lifting days and that worked. It was great. Don't get me wrong. And it's a great place to start. Um, and I would just really try and break it down and make them sore, use, you know, free weights plus machines. Um, I even had a trainer, like just like how therapists have therapists. Yep. Trainers should have trainers. Absolutely. Um, I needed someone watching my form and helping me and guiding me and all that. And then over the last three years, I've really shifted to um, separating the muscle groups. So I'll spend now an entire day just on chest and I needed to let go and be okay. Like, Hey, you didn't do two muscle groups. You you only did one, but you broke it down. And then one day I'll only destroy biceps. And I I don't know if other people do this or if it's common or if I'm weird, but it like worked for my body. And that's the key is you got to figure out what works for your body and your schedule. So even though it might seem like, oh my God, well, you know, she's in the gym six days a week now. Yeah. But they're like shorter segments now. Yeah. So it works more with my life and my kids and when they're in school and stuff. Um, but the, the female body is not designed to get huge. You know, we, we just don't have the right hormones, the right chemicals, like it's not going to happen. And whenever I do lift with a guy, um, cause I've had several lifting partners throughout the years. And especially right now, I lift about half of what they lift, except for chest, (laughs) except for chest. I'm not benching half what they're benching. Um, But, you know, example, if a guy's bicep curling a 30 pound dumbbell, I'm right there with him with 15s, you know, Um, and I'm still not massively huge and big. And I spend a lot of time ripping and destroying that muscle. But I always tell my members of my group and my clients and stuff like fat can't live where muscle grows. So the nice. more you build that muscle, the less fat you're going to have on your body. And a lot of women think like, yeah, but like if I build my muscle underneath there and I'm not doing the cardio to burn the fat off, like my muscle's going to get bigger under my fat. And then I'm just going to look bigger. And I'm like, oh, honey, no, no, <laughs> it's not how the body works. So don't be afraid of weights, ladies. Do not be afraid of weights at all. Yes. 
Amen to that. So what other mistakes, like just from a mom perspective, what are other mistakes or mindset slip ups? Are you seeing a lot of moms make out there that you are out there trying to correct when they come into your fold? Food. Oh man, food. Um, women don't slow down to make time for themselves to eat and to eat properly. And it's crazy because when people come into my program and they work with me and stuff, like one of the first things that they say after a few weeks is they're like, I'm eating more and I'm losing more weight. <laughs> they're like, does that make sense? I'm like, yes, it does. <laughs> so they, we don't take the time to stop, especially like with breakfast or something. And it doesn't matter if you're fasting or whatever, there's still a point where you break your fast, whether yep. that's 8 a.m. or 2 p.m. It doesn't matter. We're just going to call it breakfast. Um, but you have to take the time to do it. And a lot of moms just ate. The kids ate. We're out the door. We're doing the next thing. And they didn't fuel their body. But they grabbed the last bite of the kid's toast. They finished their banana. And now they've had a really shitty breakfast of just some sugar and some carb, zero protein, you know, and they go, 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 go. And, and now it's like four o'clock in the afternoon and they're starving. So they're like eating the Doritos out of the pantry because they're so hungry and they lost all sense of control. And then they're like, oh, there's leftovers in the fridge and they're grabbing. And they're like, but I'm 40 pounds overweight, but I don't eat. Yeah. You know, and they're, yeah. There's this huge disconnect. And that was one thing that I had to learn was slow down, make sure you feed yourself when you feed your children. Okay. Baby time and eat with them. <laughs> you know, that's a crazy concept. Eat together. Um, slow down and eat and make sure that you're eating the right food. So I got eating healthy confused with eating to be lean. And I'm big on organic. I'm big on non-GMO. I'm always reading ingredient labels and stuff and making sure it's like real food and everything. And I would eat like when I was think when I thought I was fit, you know, and I was trying to like do better, I would eat like organic cereal in the morning. You know, it's <laughs> it's so healthy. Like, look at the ingredients and the natural, blah, blah, blah. And I got food in, you know, and I'd eat and I'd get food in. But I was getting being healthy food confused with what's gonna make me lean. And I would snack on fruit all day long and it's healthy. I'm doing it, but I was also feeding my body all that sugar, right. you know? So I had to learn like, okay, th this might be really healthy for me, but is it, is that what's going to make me lean and ripped and my body let go of body fat? Right. So, and there's a big difference. There's a really big difference. And that's one thing that I take people through the process of learning of like, yes, quinoa is healthy for you. <laughs> However, is that going to make you lean? And when are you eating it? You know, there's a whole process with it. So make time for it. Make time for your food. Make time you're eating. Make sure you're eating the right foods. Um, and really think about like, is this just healthy for me? Or is it going to make me lean? You know? Yeah. And that's a debate as a coach, as a, a trainer that we get wrapped up in. That like, I used to be just thinking about like, I'm wasting so much time debating these people. Like, Yes. <laughs> yogurt is quote unquote, a healthier choice food. But if you eat the entire six pack, that ain't doing you any good. And as somebody that I used to weigh over 300 pounds and like eating, a, I could do one spoonful of that little cup of yogurt. I'm like, all right. And then the next one, and then the next one, I would finish right. off, you know, a six, 12 pack yogurt. And there's probably 40 grams of sugar or more uh, total. And I'm like, Ugh, that's, that's, that's not what we're after. So um, yeah, that's, that's a debate that rages on between coaches and, and, uh, yeah. and clients across the world. Yeah. And I'm sure there's people listening and like disagreeing with me and they're like, oh, did she just say not to eat fruit or she used to eat it? And that's not good. Like, <laughs> I, and we could dance around that all day long, but like, <laughs> you know, for me and my body, I figured out what worked, Yep. you know, and yep. that's, that's a process. Yeah. Well, that's something on the, that we talk about on the show a lot. We call it the right tool for the right job. And for, that's going to look different for, for different people. And some people it's going to be like a keto approach for others. It may just be a clean eating whole 30 type approach. And we don't right. say like, this is right. And that's wrong. And we don't try to be the most right. Like that's a huge right. debate. I feel like uh, between fitness coaches, like right now it's real big with like keto versus vegan and like you're killing, like what they're blaming each other for killing people and, and stuff like that. I'm like, <laughs> listen, we're both right because we're both against standard American diet of Kentucky fried chicken and Taco Bell, like both are better than that. So let's, let's lock arms and quit fighting each other, spend that energy helping people uh, that are out there lost in the abyss. So exactly, yeah. exactly. Oh man. <laughs> so frustrating. <laughs> exactly. So, okay. You touched on this briefly, but I want to go a little bit deeper on this point and it's what I call mom guilt. Uh, you know, it's, it's very 
big with moms. Doesn't seem like it's as bad with dads for some reason. <laughs> I'm throwing the men under the bus again. You had to get on this show. <laughs> but the mom guilt seems to be, you know, putting the kids first, as long as they're healthy, as long as they're doing their thing, you know, as, as long as I got them in, in 29 different activities, as long as they're getting straight A's and extra stuff at school, that's the most important thing. But if mom isn't around long term, that's a, an issue that impacts everybody because of diabetes, heart attack, stroke. Right. So how did you personally shift that thinking? Because I know you invest in yourself. Like you, you fill up your own cup with your workouts, with your nutrition, with your personal development time. Maybe talk about the mental shift you made and how you do that, how you do invest in yourself and how you let go of that guilt. And then we could talk about tips for other people to do the same. Yeah, for sure. It, and that is not easy to do. Letting go of that mom guilt. It is really, it's a real thing. It's a real hashtag. Like <laughs> it's, it's out there. And, you know, we feel like if we just take that time for us, you know, okay, 30 minutes, I'm going to go sneak away and work out or go to the gym. But now I'm not helping Susie with her homework or like, well, dinner didn't get on the table at 630. Like I wanted right. now it's seven or whatever. So hard. And we have to realize too, though, that if we don't stop and take care of ourselves, our kids are going to always get tired mommy, overworked mommy, you know, overstressed mommy. Like there's no time for you to recharge your battery. So you're always, and I don't want to say this, but you're like a half ass mom sometimes. I know I was three kids under the age of freaking six. Like it was nuts. And I'm just like, oh my God. And, and, you know, their dad traveled all the time and I was on my own and it was just go, go, go. And I was burning the candle, you know, and how do you say that? Burning the candle at both ends or something both like ends, that yeah. <laughs> all the time. And I just realized that like, oh my God, when I do put the kids to bed and I go at least do a DVD in my basement or something, I started seeing that connection of like, huh, I have a little bit more patience the next day. Or if I did it during nap time, like, Oh my God, the rest of the evening, I wasn't like momzilla, <laughs> you know, like, wow, I didn't yell at the kids 30,000 times, only twice. Like, that's really cool. So I started seeing that and light bulbs started going off for me. Um, and I'm like, okay, okay. And so I started making this connection with fitness, with feeling good. And I always tell women, I'm like, when you can find a positive way and a positive feeling and a vibe to connect with your fitness, take advantage of it use it, be aware of it, journal about it, meditate on it, like something just so it's like always like, oh, fitness, feel good, fitness, feel good. Okay. Okay. And so I would start just making it more a priority. Like, okay, this is going to happen four times a week. Okay. This is going to happen five times a week. And now I'm at the point where my family just knows this is the way mom is. But it's taken me over the last five years to get here. When we go on vacation, like, it's not like, where did mom go? Oh, no, mom's at the gym. We're, we're finding a hotel with a gym. And when we wake up, mom's not in the room. She's in the weight room, you know, but I'm only there for 30 minutes and I come back and I feel amazing and refreshed and we can have a great day. But it's taken me time to learn that, like, if you do this, you're going to have a much more productive family beach day, you know, if you go and work out. And then that lets you let go of the guilt too, like on vacation with eating, you know, and you're not home and you want to go have the ice cream with them. And you're like, eh, it's okay. Cause I worked out today. And like, I feel like a good balance right now. Yeah. So not only does it help with the mom guilt, it helps with like food guilt too, you know? So you're not constantly like, no, mom can't have that, you know, or no, I'm trying to lose weight. It's like, no, I have a good balance in my life right now. You know, nice, nice. But you have to communicate that with your significant other and your kids, if they're old enough to understand that, like, Hey, I need this time because it's going to make me a better mom. And we have to make sure that they know that like, I'm not doing it to lose weight. Mom's not on a diet. Mom's not losing weight. Mom's doing it because her body's a machine and she's working her machine really hard today. So it just always keeps running smoothly. Yes. You know? Yes. Um, it's never, it's never been mom's losing weight. It's never like, oh, mom's trying to get in better shape. Like, no, like I'm doing it. So I'm healthy and strong for you and we can run around together. And when they understand that and they're not complaining, like, where did mom go? You know, why isn't she here? Why is dad making us dinner tonight? They're like, oh no, <laughs> mom's doing that. Okay. I got it. So there's less whining and complaining. And it's just a, it's an open relationship about my workouts and fitness now. And so now zero, 
zero fucks are given when I go to the gym. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> well, and it seems like with kids too, moms really get in their head about how the whole conversation is going to go down. And yeah, there's that initial level of whining. Like my my five year old is very attached to mommy, like very attached. And mm -hmm. there is a, a, a schedule shift change in their connection time. She's going to put up a little fight about it, but then she gets over it. Like it, it's a, it's a little thing and then you get over it and it, it's not a big deal. And then the new normal happens and it's no big deal. So I, I want to encourage moms, especially to just give it a shot, like an experiment, like, okay, uh, we're going to do 30 minutes in the morning, three times a week daddy's gonna make breakfast during that time or daddy's gonna get you ready for school or whatever and just experiment with it and just try it and see what happens have the conversations communicate effectively and uh you know just you as an experiment I, I have a feeling that the family will adjust the family will survive yeah no one will die <laughs> no one will die like <laughs> it just shows that i uh, I know dads aren't, aren't the greatest at, at, at all this stuff. And I throw the men under the bus on this show quite often. Um, but being a man, like I, I get my kids ready for school, you know, several days per week. I get them off. To, I take them to school. I, I cook them food. And like we, you know, we even, I even, you know, obviously have the kids work out and stuff like that. And that's, talk about that a little bit because sometimes my parents feel like, oh, it's got to be a separate thing. But sometimes we can get everybody, obviously, yeah. Like if, I, if I'm doing heavy deadlifts, I don't want the little toes around for me to drop the weights on or things like <laughs> right. that. But if I'm just doing like a body weight workout and they're getting some stuff done, just moving and grooving, like it's, the kids show interest, like get them involved, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. I always say that, you know, when the gyms are open, because we're in quarantine right now, <laughs> they're living a different life right now. They're, they're seeing a lot of mom workout right now. Yep. <laughs> um, but in normal days, like it's important to go to the gym, you know, have your workouts because that's important for us to leave our environment and disconnect. No one can bother us, but it's also important for your kids to see you and watch you grunt, sweat, push weight. And it's really opened my eyes or my clients, kids eyes and stuff, because I tell my clients like, Hey, I want you doing a home workout this week. Like when was the last time you did that? Your kids could probably see it. And when the kids see it, the moms always come back and they're like, you know, Parker said that he couldn't believe that I could push that weight over my head. And he's like, wow, mom, you're so strong. And I'm like, look how you changed your perspective in his eyes though. You know, like that's, that's pretty darn cool. So I think Every now and then, like once or twice a month, make sure you're doing it at home so they see you and yeah. actually see what mommy's capable of. And that makes them want to be involved and be like, look, mom, I'm strong like you. Like, look, I can lift this too. And that's huge. You're imprinting them for life. Yeah. It's, it's so cool. Like with my five-year-old daughter, I know that she's growing up in a different physical fitness environment than I did. Like I was, I was born in 1980. I grew up in the eighties and nineties. Like the whole presidential fitness challenge was very like, there were boy push-ups and girl push-ups and boy yep. pull-ups. And the girls just had to like hang on there, you know? Right. And, and like, there was totally different standards. And now it's just like fitness. It's not boy and girl push-ups or boy and girl fitness. Yep. It's just exercise. And there's a hell of a lot of women that can put men to shame on all kinds of, of physical fitness stuff, strength, endurance, whatever. And like, I think that's it's so cool that she's going to grow up in that environment where it's cool to lift weights and, and yes. deadlift and do pull-ups and do gymnastics and do sports and whatever. So what, as a female that has grown up in this environment, like, what are you seeing with, with the fitness trends? What are you excited about for your daughters to experience that maybe people like you and I had a little different perspective growing up in? Yeah, I, um, I, in, in, in school and in, in like grade school and we'd have to do the challenges and stuff. Like I was always the one that was like, I'm not going to do girl push ups, Like, you know, and then I get sent to the principal's office. <laughs> I, I, I went to private school and I was always like, Melissa sit still, Melissa, stop doing this. And <laughs> stop so, doing boy push ups. Yeah. Like, no, you can't do that. I'm like, yes, I can. I'm not going to let go. Like <laughs> that was me. Um, but I love that. Like now, you know, all the kids run the mile together you know, like there's no girl mile and boy mile, like everyone just runs it together. But my daughters are get, getting to see me um, be strong and have muscles and be proud of it. And I love that because now they're like, oh, I'm strong. It's not about like, oh, this looks cute on me. It's like, no, you're strong. Everything's about strength in our family. And my girls get to, because they do martial arts too now, 
I did start them when they were super young because I didn't want to push it on them. Yeah. Um, and they transitioned from dance in the dance world into martial arts. And it was just a much better fit and they love it. And there are boys now at our Taekwondo studio that are afraid to spar my girls. And my girls are starting to pick up on that more. Cause I don't bring it out. I don't say anything like, Oh, did you see that little boy? You almost made a business pants. Like that was hilarious. Um, I don't say anything, keep it to myself. <laughs> um, but I help them, um, just be like, Hey, it doesn't matter if you're going to fight that boy. He might be two years older than you, but you stand your ground and you fight and you be strong and you, you, you know, you use your technique that you learned and everything. And, that empowers them. Like, even if they got their butt kicked, they're still like, yeah, but I fought him and I did it. I'm like, yes, it doesn't matter that you're a girl, you're an athlete, you know? And I always say in our home, like we are athletes, you know, we eat and we train, we do not diet and exercise, you know? So when it comes to the discussion of like food and everything like that, it's always like, well, is that fueling your body or not? Is it a treat or not? Like if it's a treat, it's okay. But just always remember, like, is this, is this fuel? Um, and there's just no, there's no stopping them because the, they're a female. And I, I didn't, I didn't get that. Like growing up because my family's all military and it was all boys, you know, just doing boy things. And <laughs> my dad being a Testosterone cop. Testosterone Yeah. Like you were really lucky if you saw a female cop back then, like what? <laughs> um, you know, but I grew up thinking that like, oh, well, men are just in charge. Men are stronger. You're the weirdo that wants to keep up with the boys and I don't want my girls to think like that they're the weirdo, you know, I want them to be like, no, this is my norm and I'm okay with it. And I'm going to find a boy that's okay with it too, you know, and it's every little aspect of their life. It's, it's going to change them, you know, with the partner that they pick, the, the path they take in college, the sports that they decide to play, like all of it really does stem from like their foundation of health, fitness, strength, all of it, you know, and unfortunately we can see the difference in other kids that don't have that in their life. Yeah. And then, and then you get my kids lecturing them at the lunch table of like, Hmm, I see all of your food is coming out of a package today for lunch. Like, do you have any fresh fruit in there? <laughs> <laughs> yes. My, my son is well known at birthday parties. He hates pizza for whatever reason. He won't touch it. He, so does my oldest daughter. Melted like, cheese makes him like gag. So oh my God, that's the same with my daughter. She hates pizza and <laughs> so, she hates melted cheese. <laughs> so he, at one birthday party, he's like, do you have any broccoli or anything? And, <laughs> and all the parents look at me like fitness man has brainwashed him. And I was like, I swear to God, he's never liked pizza. Um, yeah. <laughs> Not my fault. Yeah. It's Not uh, my fault. You're ruining his childhood. I'm like, ah, your kids can have all the processed carbs that they want. <laughs> right. It's all, it's all good. Um, so <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. It's, uh, our, our parenting universe has now fully been connected as the, the pizza hate happens. Right. <laughs> so with people that you're out there, you know, coaching, you're helping all, all these moms, like what's one of the biggest struggling points that you see that's, that's popping up that you are really fighting to help them correct right now, whether it's a stress issue or, you know, things pop up like nighttime snacking, things like that. Like what's the most prevalent thing that you're like, this, this keeps popping up. And so we need to really address this with more, more energy. Yeah. Nighttime snacking. That's funny. You say that that is a really big deal. And I know a lot of people are dealing with it right now because we're on quarantine and everyone's like Netflix and chill. Right. And it's something about sitting on that couch that makes you hungry. And you're like, Oh, I need a snack with this. When in actuality, it's just kind of like a hand mouth type thing. Like it's just something you need to happen. So right. if you can make a good choice with what goes into your mouth and stuff, it's, it's going to be better than, you know, sitting down with a bag of cheese popcorn, you know, find something else. But exactly. um, nighttime snacking is a really big thing um, right now. And just the willpower and finding the right foods to eat at dinner time and filling up on the right thing at dinner time, So you're not hungry later for the snacking. Um, that's really big in helping women identify that. But another thing too, it's kind of like a totally different topic is self worth. Like I'm running into so much of that right now. And when I talk to women on the phone and see if they, you know, if they're a fit for my program and if we can work together, so many of them start crying and they're like, I don't know who I am anymore. I've lost myself. Yeah. They're like, I used to, and cause I, I work with a lot of women that are, um, they used to be fit or they used to be an athlete. Um, I don't necessarily, I mean, I do, but I don't have a whole lot of clients of like, 
they've never worked out. They're morbidly obese, you know, like that's my niche. And like, that's, that's kind of who I work with is they used to be there and they just start crying and they're like, I let myself go. I don't value myself anymore. I don't value my time, um, my energy. Like I put it all into my kids and like that mom guilt we talked about already of like, I feel like if I give any time and effort to myself and take away from them, I'm a bad mom. Yeah. And we grew up, you know, we grew up in the age of like, mom stays home, yeah. dad works, she takes care of us, mom does everything. And, you know, my mom didn't like go to the gym like that or sneak away or make time for herself. My mom's life was us kids. Yeah. And so now you have these moms who, who had moms like that and were like, no, women empowerment, like go to the gym, get strong, have muscles. Like, my God, you could have a six pack. And they're like, eh, what? <laughs> Oh, oh, okay. You know, so just taking women through that journey and that process of like, let it go. Take it one day at a time. Don't worry about next week. Yeah. Just worry about today. What can you do for you today? And then and a lot of women get overwhelmed and they're like, yeah, but you know, next week is hard or this weekend, you know, we have this going on. I'm like, don't worry about it yet. Just today. What can you do for you today? And when you break it up into small steps like that, and when women can just break it up in their head, they're like, hey, I got a game plan for Thursday and Friday. Like this is going to happen. And they're like, oh my God, I actually fit my workout in. And you're like, oh my God, I actually went in my room and just did yoga for an hour. Like, you know, it just takes the pressure off, but then they see, they make those happy feeling connections again and stuff. Um, and then they start to value their time a little bit more and they value themselves. But man, that that guilt is a real thing. And that yeah. self-worth is a real thing. Yeah. Amen to that. I a hundred percent agree with what you just said there. And I, th I feel like if that's one thing that we can help eradicate. If we can eradicate that, just that, all that anxiety and that pressure that we put on ourselves to be perfect. And it's like all or nothing that, that uh, I call it the transformation light switch syndrome where it's, you know, yeah. light switch, it's on or off and yeah. it's all based around self-worth. Am I even worth the effort? You know? Right. And we are like, you are worth it. I talk about that all the time. So, yeah. Um, and we look different. Like, I think women do need to embrace too, that like fitness doesn't look like one thing. And I yeah. hate that all the women on the covers of magazines all kind of look alike. They all, you know, if you took the last 12 issues of one particular magazine, yeah, they're different race and, and color and, and stuff, but they all, they all kind of look alike. You know, and that bothers me because then we think that that's what health and fitness looks like. The yeah. slender, tall, photoshopped female, you know, and it's like, no, your, your legs might be like huge because you're just amazing at squatting, you know, and then like, that's hot coming out of jean shorts, like these muscles and stuff. And like, that's okay. That's your version of fitness yep. might not be on a cover of a magazine, but like your healthy body is what your healthy body is. It doesn't matter what it looks like on the cover of a magazine. And I think women just need to let go of like this perfect image of like, yeah, but her waist is so tiny and mine's not. Well, you've had six babies and that's okay. Is your, is your stomach strong and, and amazing now for having six babies and stuff. And you're, and you can do sit-ups and you're just a powerhouse and someone can punch you in the gut, you know, and phase you like, that's cool. That's power, yeah. you know, embrace it, love it, welcome it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, and, I love what you just said about just accepting who you are, not falling into that comparison syndrome that so many people do. Like they go through Instagram and be like, yeah, I've lost a hundred pounds, but I don't look like Kate Beckinsale yeah. <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. You know? it, it's just, uh, it's something that's, that's like a virus out there. That's worse than the coronavirus is, is that comparison it is. syndrome. So it is. All right. I know that we have piqued people's interest and if they've never heard about you, I'm sure they're eager to dive into your world and the whole world of the, the bomb mom uh, <laughs> situation. So uh, talk about how they can connect to you. Also talk about your podcast and uh, all that goodness that's going to be happening here soon. Yes, for sure. So my podcast is the bomb mom podcast. Imagine that. And we will be launching in the middle of April. Um, so you guys can keep an eye out for that. And I always encourage people to follow me like on Instagram and stuff. Um, and that's Melissa Bogle fitness because you get to see my story. I'm kind of an open book. Um, I'm very raw, very real, but like I want people to like me and be able to connect with me before they work with me. I think that's really important when you're working with any type of trainer or anyone that you're is feel like is going to be potentially your coach. Like there's gotta be that connection. So definitely find me and follow me on Instagram at Melissa Vogel fitness and Twitter. Um, 
I'm <laughs> I'm pretty funny on Twitter. Not, I'm not going to lie. I save good stuff for Twitter. So make sure you find me on Twitter, Melissa Vogel Fit. Um, and then on YouTube, my YouTube channel is going, Melissa Vogel Fitness. Pretty much if you, Vogel, if you Google Melissa Vogel Fitness, you're going to find me. And then if you're like, no, I, I kind of want to work with her. I really like this. Um, my website is easy to remember. It's busy2bombfitmom.com. <laughs> busy to bomb fit mom.com. That's right. Uh, so yeah, I, I highly, highly recommend checking out Melissa's Instagram. I, I love it. I instantly connected you with you when I saw your stuff there because you post about your life, your kids, your, your martial arts. And that's how I am too. And there's a lot of people in fitness. It's like only pictures of my abs and my yeah. ass. And yeah. it's like, you know, I like learning about what people are doing at home and, and stuff like that. And you really are an open book with that. And uh, yeah, I think that's super cool. So check her stuff out. Now, Melissa, I like to send our audience out with action. I feel like we've entertained them, we've inspired them, but let's give them an action step. So I've got a little technique that I, I, I talk about called the implementation alarm. So 24 hours from now, they're going to set their alarm on their phone to go off and take action on something that inspired them. So what's one step, if there is a mom listening that's been falling into that comparison syndrome, that, that transformation light switch syndrome, that I can't put myself first because of the kids and the family come first, like what's one action step that they could take in the next 24 hours just to initiate some momentum in the right direction? Yeah, set a schedule even if it's just for the next seven days, like get out a piece of paper, doesn't even have to be fancy or an app or anything and write out Monday through Sunday or whatever day you want to start on and figure out, look at your days. This is going to be my time. And then, because if it's not scheduled, if it's not set, it's just like this flighty thought, like, oh, I hope that happens. Like I, I plan on working out, but once you get it in pen and paper and ink and then post it on your fridge and be like, this is mom's time. And like you said, test it out. Just do it for the next seven days, test it out, see how the family responds, how you feel, but get it in ink, get it on paper, schedule it out, make it happen. It's an easy step to take. And you're going to be shocked at how much uh, more productive you feel too, just because it's like, oh, it's on the books. It's going to happen. <laughs> yes. What a great tip. And you can do that in the next 24 hours, everybody. So set that implementation alarm and get ready to take action on that. Melissa, thank you so much. This, this conversation has flown by. We will, uh, I, I can guarantee you guys out there listening, this will not be the last time that you see us combine our powers. Uh, yes. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to toss some ideas, uh, Melissa's direction here after we're done recording. But um, I enjoy your energy. I enjoy what you're doing. I think you're doing something that's needed. You're really leading by example for all the not only the moms, but you know all, all the females and the parents out there. Uh, I just really, really enjoy your positive mojo that you just put out there in the universe every single day. So thank you for your time here, my friend. Oh, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. All right, everybody. Now it's time to get out there and take action. Let's get out there and own it every meal, every workout, every day. I will see you on the next episode. Thank you so much for listening to this week's episode. And don't forget to head on over to millionpoundmission.com to pick up your free Mission Possible Community Virtual Welcome Kit. Now, this free resource is going to show you how to get plugged into our community chats, our amazing Facebook group. It'll show you how to sign up for one-on-one -on -one hot seat sessions with me, the PhD, and we'll even show you how to start your own local meetup group for that extra support. Now, remember, my friend, this isn't just a podcast. This is a community, and you are an important part of it. So head on over to millionpoundmission.com today and get plugged in.